Hey, I'm Derek, it's me, Derek, and welcome to Stop Skeletons from Fighting. My life on this channel is essentially falling down rabbit holes, clawing my way back to the surface, and reporting what I found like a daredevil spelunker who everyone thought had just died, enabling both my poor impulse control and morbid curiosity. And I feel exactly zero shame for this. The last few months, I found myself somehow inundated with Densha De Go, a Japanese train simulator bundled with, of course, this, its very own train controller. Like it's got levers, but also it's also got buttons and stuff. Like I'm sure you can drive a train with it, but what else can you do with it, huh? I love weird controllers. And this has been on my bucket list for a while, but fate had decided to drop not one, but three of these things on me all at once. The doors of fate slid open and I was sucked inside the crowded world of Japan's original arcade train simulator. I spent way too much time playing with these things and I got a couple things to say. This is punching weight. But first, this video is brought to you in part by Soylent. If you think about it, your body is like a train and that's, wait a minute. If train is body, then, oh, oh no. What's, hey, I can't, no, please, please have a fan. Not bad. Let's try Cafe Mocha now. That's some good coffee. Yeah, that's solid coffee right there. Right on. Soylent is a science-backed synergy of macro and micronutrients designed to keep you on a healthy track. It's the energy, right? What I really like about their products, they range from $2 to $4 per serving, which makes them really, really affordable. And they are doing a deal for my viewers. The first 500 people to use the link below and the code SSFF30 will get 30% off their first subscription with Soylent. My personal favorite flavors are strawberry and the coffee. So if you decide to get those, tell them Uncle Derek sent you. Use the link below and the code SSFF30 for 30% off. And Soylent even has a green flavor, a green bottle that it's, it's mint chocolate. It is for the people and of the people. No, just for the people. But people love, people love the, the, the they love mint. Soylent's got you, but not in the bottle. They got you happy to drink the green one because it's just mint and chocolate. Pretty sure. The game these amazing controllers all belong to is Densha De Go, or Let's Go By Train. Densha meaning train, De being the particle to mean by means of, in this case, travel, and Go meaning go! Was it really that difficult, Caddy? Go! He just salty that Japan is one of the few countries his didn't colonize. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't use the full Japanese Densha de Ikimasho or Densha de Iko, but trains are fun. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> trains are great. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck in deadlock traffic on the highway and thought, hell yeah, I am so happy my country went all in on cars. Well, if you want to simulate living in a world where you can get drunker than you've ever been in your life and throw up in a train instead of a car, Densha de Go. I don't know why I just insulted three countries and like half a billion people on a video about train controllers. And here we go. The Densha De Go controller. I had hands on three separate uh, controllers, Saturn, Dreamcast, and PlayStation, which are all functionally the same. On the left here is the accelerator with uh, six positions, neutral, and then one, two, three, four, five. And then on the right is the brake, swinging just shy of a full 180 degrees with uh, 11 positions. You got neutral and then brake, one through eight. And then you have the e-brake here and then full brake there. Almost 180. And then you have select, start, A, B, and C, and I don't know, a fourth. <laughs> they, they cut a little groove here for a fourth button. Not to mention, PlayStation controllers are the only ones that have a select button, and Saturn controllers are the only ones that have a C button. I don't know, it's strange. But this thing is really, it's really sturdy, like the plastic casing is really hard. Each lever is like really nice and chunky, so I mean, despite being kind of small, it's really tactile and satisfying to move the levers it's it's fun i own a lot of weird video game junk and i love all of it but i came into all these dentia controllers really recently actually and it very quickly spiraled out of control first my friend brian from dreamcast junkyard had the complete saturn set and let me borrow it i had to give it back before i shot this part of the video but then i found playstation version at a local retro shop and luckily uh, I already had the game, so suddenly I had two complete sets. And then like a week or so after that, I went to another store. And sorry, it sounds like I'm like bragging, but like, I don't know, Seattle just has a whole lot of video game stores. Turns out another shop had the Dreamcast version complete inbox for years. 
and no one wanted it. And even though I went there all the time, uh, I just never noticed it. So this really is the type of life I live. I I'm not kidding. So here's a true story. I was on the fence about buying this for this video, but when I decided to, I was like, all right, well, I better call the store first just to make sure they haven't already sold it. Don't want to drive down there and come home empty handed. So I called them and say, hey, do you still have that Japanese train controller for the Dreamcast? Then should they go? And the person was like, the what? And I was like, and I tried to explain. I even I described the box. I told them where in the store it was. And they were just like, I'm going to give you off to somebody else. And so they just <laughs> gave the phone to somebody else. So I got to start up again. Hey, do you still have that Japanese train simulator for the Dreamcast? The Densha De Go game. And I shit you not. The guy on the other end goes, yes, Derek, we still have it. I'll put it aside for you. <laughs> because who else will be calling for the Densha De Go controller? When I die, this is what I'm going to be remembered for. And I, I, I guess I'm okay with that. Yeah, I earned it. But of course, the actual reason I bought these things and spent all this money is so that I could play Doom and Street Fighter and just see what the hell happens. But I suppose before I get to all that, I should talk about the actual game they were made for, Densha Dego. Okay, I don't know why it says Densha Dego on the side. It is in fact Densha. It was originally an arcade game, but the first home port was to PlayStation in 97. So let's start there. Wow, <laughs> what is this intro? Oh my god, I'm getting pumped. I'm, d I'm, d I'm, I'm getting hyped here. I didn't know that public transportation could be this exciting, but damn, let's get some trains. Oh god, I want, I want to drive that train. I want to drive that train. I want to drive all the trains. I think I love trains. Public transit, woo, yes. But wait, why are they flashing pictures of trains over footage of trains? Did, oh god, I worry Tyler Durden got the final edit on this. Okay, let's start the trains. I wanna, I wanna drive some trains. I, you got me. Densha de go. Densha de go. So a quick tutorial lays it all out. Densha senpai here lets us know that it's, it's simple enough. You know, you got this much time to get this much far. Hit the brakes when you reach the station. Slowly release them until you come to a stop. All right, seems easy enough. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure there's more to it. But I think I'm ready. Let's, let's go. Let's densha de go the trains. Navigating the menu with the controller is no problem. Uh, I got four. I got four trains, and I uh, uh, that one I guess sure. E brake on, acceleration off. Okay, I'm ready for this. And I guess that's me. I'm that. That's Uncle Derek train right there. That is me. Here we go. And then here I am. I'm, I'm officially trained. I'm 100% trained. I am become train. Cruising along, and this game's actually really chill. It looks a little rough, not the greatest 3D graphics, even for a PS1 game. But the audio, like the sounds of the train and the conductor talking on the intercom. It's, it's really chill. I, I like this. But as I approach the next station, a bunch of kanji and arrows flash on the screen suddenly. and I'm like, oh crap, should I, I guess I'll break? And even though I'm making really good time, I break way too early, way too much. And I finally get there, but I'm 20 seconds late and six meters short. Wait, why? Why is it still counting down? It's six meters too far. The platform's like 200 meters long. Really? Are the people outside refusing to get on? Densha Senpai pops up and says something passive aggressive, I'm sure. And then, <laughs> damn, game over already. All right, well, that was uh, humbling, but let's keep going. Second attempt. Let's go. Continue. I see my time is already counting down, so I pull the accelerator and the game yells at me. ATS, which I'm assuming means awful train, stupid. Yeah, but once I finally get going, it's back to chill. Again, there's no music, but like just lots of fun, cozy train noises. But then something flashes on the screen real quick. That was probably important. And then a few seconds later, there's a big yellow X that flashes on the screen. Wait, what am I doing wrong? Okay, I lost five points. And as I keep going, more stuff is flashing on the screen. I can't relax now. Like, this is probably really important information. Ah, okay, but a green light, great. But then another big X. Another five points docked. What? Like a dozen more symbols flash on the screen, but in spite of all that, I stop perfectly on time, except I'm way over the line, which is apparently game over. Densha Senpai pops up to tell me that there is an e-break, but to never use it? This game on a dime goes from cozy and charming to just panic-inducing. And it doesn't get any better for your boy. The next trip, it switches the speed limits on me and I don't slow down in time and I'm hit with the awful train stupid award again. And they stop my train? So I guess the only one that can use the e-brake is the hand of God? And as I approach the station, it tells me that the speed limit is now 70 kilometers an hour? Wait, am I not supposed to stop here? 
Doesn't matter though, I'm so far behind schedule. Densha Senpai just stops the train and politely tells me I belong in front of the train, not in it. Okay, she doesn't actually, she isn't actually saying that. But you know what? I I, I feel judged and, and you know what? Now I don't appreciate it. I don't need her right now. I feel bad enough already. I don't need her judgment. All right, but the redemption, the last stop. I'm staying at the speed limit and I'm making great time as I pull into the station. But I break a little too soon and have to speed up again and then six meters short again. But I had time to spare, so uh, come on. 17 seconds late, but I stopped on the one meter mark. Densha Senpai notices me and I get the credits and the high score. But mercy, this game is strict. Do not be fooled by the fun name, the action-packed train porn intro, and the fact that this game debuted in the arcades, because this is not a quote arcade game. This is not Crazy Taxi with trains. This is a capital S simulator. You are not out here to whoa, make some crazy public transit. There are rules and you will follow them. And if you're even a few meters too short, everyone just refuses to get on your train, I guess. <laughs> but even though I suck, I will Densha on. Let's see how I do on the Saturn port. This is Densha Dego EX, which is not a sequel, but an updated version that is exclusive to the Saturn. And wow, this game was not much of a looker on PlayStation, but look at those ground textures. That is amazing. And guess what? I'm playing even worse too. These are the exact same tracks that I just played on the PlayStation. And I'm, and I'm, how am I doing worse? Oh my God. But despite the frustration and despite sucking so hard, I do want to get better. I, I want to figure this out. Like it's gonna feel so good when I get that one perfect stop. Like right here, I land five meters away, which is still not enough. But then I correct and I'm two meters away. Still not enough. Two meters is like six and a half feet. That is a Rui Hachimura sized gap on a platform 230 meters long. Really? Now it would be nice if Densha Senpai just gave you a low rating, but no, you have to hit that mark or you have technically not arrived. But of course, I'm then docked 10 points for accelerating in the station. And since I only had five points to give, guess what? Game over, my friend. Oh man. So it has become clear that just jumping into Densha Dego without a translated version was a huge mistake. So before I jump into the Dreamcast port, I watch the footage and I translate some of the messages that appear on screen and some of the errors and some of the notifications and you know, all the text that pops on the screen. And it, it really becomes clear. This game is all about the nuances, the details, and those little details are lost in the language barrier important stuff like before you leave the station wait till the light turns on and then accelerate blowing your horn before and after a tunnel that's what the big x means it's not that you're doing something wrong is that you have to blow your horn and then of course understanding that going too fast is just as bad as going too slow in fact if you go too fast it will dock you points for that so with some translating and some research and watching a couple of videos for tips i am ready to move on to densha de go 2 for the dreamcast and right away you can see the improved graphics. Pop in on the horizon is still a little rough, but the game has never looked smoother. Okay, coming into my first stop, looks like I'm a little over, but then my distance re resets? Wait, was I not supposed to stop? Okay, crap. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to stop, and this unfortunately makes me extremely late for my actual stop, and... Alright, not a good first attempt here, but I'm feeling good about the second one. Okay, here we go, next one. Three seconds early, but four meters over. Shockingly, not a game over. Okay, I, I feel good about that one. Yeah, I'm, feel, I'm feeling confident. All right, bring on the last stop. I feel I feel good about this one. Let's go. I am tearing through this tunnel at 90 kilometers an hour, and I notice the white and blue colors on my destination, which I now know means don't stop here. But I still slow down just in case. Bad habit. But here we go. All right, cool. The final stop, the platform is really short, which throws me off. <sighs> 12 seconds off, but boom, right on the mark. Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? 48 centimeters? 48 centimeters my ass shut up i did it i don't care i'm the best at trains i henceforth declare myself king of all trains <laughs> please ignore the fact that i played this game and failed for like another hour and i went back to the playstation version and failed some more there i am terrible at this game and if you are a fan of this game and you got this far into the video i bet it was excruciating or hilarious to watch me play this or attempt to play this 
But then why did I keep playing? Why did I keep trying? Because I, I did want to get good. I did want to keep trying. I get the appeal of this game. I am not good enough at it at all, but that almost gambler's high feeling of this time it's gonna be the one. This is gonna be the one where I stop perfectly, where I hit the brake perfectly, and all this wasted time and energy, it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna feel so good when I finally stop it perfectly. I have to believe that at some point, someone somewhere went on a date with someone and they strut up to the Denshi De Go machine and they just stop it perfectly. And their date just stands there like awestruck, jaw on the floor, just thinking, oh, we fucking tonight. Remake that movie Ghost, but instead of Clay, put a Denshi De Go controller there, 10 times more romantic. I don't know, I don't think it's far-fetched that that happened because Denshi De Go was a genuine phenomenon in Japan and only Japan. I guess a game about driving real Japanese trains on real Japanese tracks through truncated real life parts of Japan maybe doesn't need to be released anywhere else. I mean, Japan loves its trains. And why shouldn't they? Japan has one of the most advanced public transit systems in the world. As an American, I can only dream of taking a nap while a bullet train takes me to the other side of the country. Densha Dego would become Taito's second biggest franchise right behind Space Invaders, and it never left the country. For example, this version of Densha 2 for the Dreamcast is called Densha Dego 2 3000 Bondi, released to celebrate 3000 arcade units sold of the second game. Not the first and second game, just the second game. They sold thousands of these machines all over Japan, where arcades didn't die as quickly as they did in North America, thanks in part to hits like this. And yes, I had three different controllers for this video, but you have no idea how many controllers were made for these games over the years. Hold on, I got, I have it all written down here. Hold on, one second. So there was the model that came up for the PlayStation, Saturn, and Dreamcast. There's also the PC and the N64 model. And that one's special because it'll let you plug in the Hey You Pikachu microphone so that you could also do the intercom announcements. Another thing they could dock you for. There was a one-handed model for the PlayStation and PC, but the PC model had like way more buttons. There was a variant called the uh, Mamecon that looked like a PlayStation and Densha controller mated. I actually kind of wish I'd gotten this one. It would have been way easier to film. It not only has an accelerator level with a D-pad GP, it only has two shoulder buttons. But it's pretty dumb and pretty cool. I might have the scope. Might have the scope. When Densha 3 came out on PS2, they updated the classic model with the Type 2 variant which has a full D-pad, four face buttons, rumble in the handles, a foot pedal for the uh, for the horn, and a light for the passenger door. There is an awesome, rare, clear purple variant of this, and my heptoscope, oh my god. There was another two-handle variant, the Rojo Hen model that resembled steam trains. Uh, then there was the Shinkansen two-handle variant for bullet trains that had an LCD screen for real-time speed and gear gauges. Oh, and when the Shinkansen model came to the Wii years later, the LCD screen was just a sticker. But despite that, the Wii version is the more rare of the two and the more highly sought after. Figure that out. Oh, and the Shinkansen bullet train port for the Wii had motion control features for kids. What the hell was that like? And then there was the 2018 Densha Dego plug and play that resembles the type two variant and the 2023 plug and play two that resembles the Shinkansen bullet train model. They also made two LCD games that look kind of like Tamagotchi. The most surprising thing was that the first one was made in 1998, the second one, 2005. Making LCD games in 2005, my God. Oh, and this is not even including all the controllers made for a different PC game, a whole different series aptly titled Train Simulator. And not to be confused with Microsoft Train Simulator, Train Simulator, it's different. There was the Master Controller 1, Master Controller 2, the Multi-Train Controller, the Train Mask-On, the San-In One Handle, none of which are made by Taito, but are compatible with Densha Dego. And then finally, there is the 2020 Hashido Yamano Tesen two-handle model but the handle on the right doesn't move for Switch and PS4 that comes in clear, black, red, blue, and just an absurd amount of face buttons. This legacy of Densha De Go controllers spans almost three decades, over three decades if you count the controllers that weren't made by Taito. There's so many of them. Oh, and don't forget the spin-off games. There was also Jet Dego, which like, yo, look at this monstrosity. Uh, this one got a Game Boy Color port the Game Boy Color got a flight simulator. What? There was RC Dago, which was just a racing game, not a simulator. Uh, but of course, it had its own custom controller. I'm fairly certain this controller uh, was only used in the arcade. 
But then again, the back of the console box says analog steering control capable. I don't know what the hell that means. Oh, and this has the distinction of technically being the only Densha Dead Go game to come to PAL and NTSC regions. Well, I guess also there was Power Shovel, which came out to PAL and NTSC. In Japan, it came with a big controller, and on the box it says it's part of the Taito Go series. I was able to find a video, shout out to Happy Gaming House. They claim that the Japanese controller does not work with the NTSC and PAL versions of the game, which saves me from having to buy another weird ass controller. Thank you, dude. There was Kinsha Dego, which was all about steam trains because you have more things to manage like the boiler pressure gauges. Uh, there's apparently a co-op two player mode in this version. What the hell is that like? There was the landing series of arcade games that Taito never ported to any consoles, but I still think fits in the spirit of Dencha Dego. Oh yeah, and Dencha Day D, the Dencha Dego Initial D crossover that definitively proves that there is good in this universe. There are five of these games, but for my money, the ultimate proof of this series' domination was the two ports for the Wonder Swan. Two! I mean, it got two ports for the Game Boy Color as well, but sort of freaking Jet Dago and Metal Gear and Dragon's Lair. Everything was coming out of the Game Boy Color. But the Wonder Swan and two of them is genuinely shocking. I know I said that I fell down a rabbit hole for this video. Turns out I just stared deep into the Densha Dago Abyss and it stared back at me and I ran away screaming. I just bought this thing to play Doom and Street Fighter with. I had no idea that paying respect to the series it actually was made for would be so overwhelming. I know it's a hacky thing to say, but I did not expect this part of the video was gonna get that damn long. This is a topic that I could talk about forever, forever. So you'll have to settle for just these three for now. Not to mention that since these games demand perfection, precision, discipline, and strict adherence to rules, it is my moral duty to defy everything this game stands for and see if this controller can play other games and what better place to start than Doom. Doom on a Densha Dego controller. Let's do it. I'm going to start with the PlayStation port of Doom just because I have that set up right now. But the great thing about this video is I have the Saturn version of Doom and I have the Saturn version of the Densha controller so we can do multiple ports of Doom on multiple Densha controllers. So, uh... If you are unfamiliar with controller experimentation, what's happening right now on the screen is actually a good sign. The controller here is outputting something to the game. It's moving the cursor through the menu, uh, which is good because sometimes, you know, special controllers like this just straight up don't work, which we will see later on. It is important to remember that we don't have a D-pad for this thing. So identifying which lever and which position is outputting for the D-pad, in other words, figuring out how we're gonna be moving, it's gonna be the most important part. And honestly, it's gonna be the funnest part. So, oh, uh, all right. Well, it looks like the accelerator doing a face button as well as moving. Okay. Uh, the brake, I don't see the brake doing anything. No, nope, it's, okay, oh, oh, back. Oh, I don't want deathmatch. No, let's select to abort that. I don't want, no. Nope. Okay, been messing around on just this menu for about a minute, and I have already discovered something really, really fascinating. Again, we got no D-pad, and thank God these, th these face buttons are here to help us navigate stuff, but depending on where I have the accelerator, the brake works or it doesn't work. So hold on, I'm gonna go back to the menu here, and I have the brake, or right, they have the accelerator here, and neutral. Okay. Brake does nothing. Hear that? Let's go back. Oh. See, now this works. Look. On one, the brake does something. If I go back to neutral, the brake does nothing. That is... Alright, on two. Alright, if accelerator's on two, brake doesn't do anything. Accelerator's on three. It does do something. What? Accelerator on four does something. And... Oh, okay, we're in a game now. But like... So... We're finding out that even... Not only do these two levers do different things, that they do different things depending on which is which. 
Oh my god, there's so much to experiment with here. They work in tandem? This is gonna be wild. And I'm running in circles uncontrollable. <clears throat> Not surprising. You know, I didn't expect this to be easy. In fact, I welcome the challenge. The Blake level, the break, the, wow, the break level, wow. Uh, the break, the break lever uh, is changing my weapon. Accelerator punches a barrel. Thank you for that. Well, I'm currently driving Doom Slayer about as well as I drive a train, so this all seems appropriate. Okay, so the sensitivity on the levers is a lot more than just the six positions it can stop at. I can kind of feather it between two gears and kind of almost run straight ahead. Thankfully, I got the face buttons. I can eke out a little more control with uh, with strafe on button. Okay, I'm gonna. My goal is I want to get up that stairs and get the green armor. That's my goal. I can do it. Yes, I'm getting, I'm getting real close. Yes. Wait. Damn it. Okay, I'm gonna use the short hallway to study myself. Bam! There we go. See, this is what I love about this crap. Like, <laughs> maybe this is just me, but after a while, there's a sort of zen connection you like get with the controller. Just, it just kind of just your hands just do the things it needs to do in relation to how the controller works. Like, I don't know. This is gonna be the saving grace with these tests. The ABC face buttons will be functioning as the three corresponding face buttons on the PlayStation controller. And I know everyone has a different name for these buttons, but I think deep down, we all know that the truth is that they're actually called Foresight Twitter 360. Okay, but I can't stop at armor. I gotta beat a level. That is, all right, here we go. I'm going to beat a level of doom with the Dentia controller. Here we go. All right, maybe I need to get a, I need to get a kill first. Hold on, can I, ow, no, hold on. <laughs> Damn it, <laughs> my first kill wasn't even mine, but I got that one, okay, all right. I move really fast, maybe I can just, oh, look at that, uh, not quite. Okay, nope, no, okay, get in there. Okay, nope, get in there, get, okay. <laughs> oh boy, this, okay, I think this toxic, <laughs> this toxic floor is gonna become a problem, no. Get out of there! Oh god! Alright, five health. Let's just see if I can dash at the exit. <laughs> okay, no. Alright, alright. Uh, that went about as well as my first train ride, so... Take two, here we go, no time for armor. Let's just get going. No. No, t turn around. No, don't close the door. Okay. So up turns me left and down turns me right if I can kind of stay within the second gear. Got him! I mean, it could run past the enemies, but that's not how you play Doom, even with a Dentia controller. Gotta get as many kills as you can. I don't care. But I cleared the poison, no problem. Can I get past that imp to the exit? No. Okay, well then let's try Saturn Doom. Because all three of the Dentia controllers have these same buttons, but the systems they work for do not. And here we go, check this out. On Saturn Doom with the Saturn Dentia controller, the brake lever instead controls movement. And hold on, I'm gonna stop for a second. You have no idea how hard I'm struggling to say brake level. Oh, see, no, no, Blake le le lever, lever. I did it again, brake lever. Anyway, so brake seven seems to be like a neutral walk backwards. And the e-brake and brake six are mostly my left and right. The level of nuance here is actually really incredible. Every tiny movement is a different input. Face button's got my attack though, and with the strafe on button, I can control my movements and aiming well enough by just spinning and stopping. But it also looks like walking backwards is how Saturn Doom is gonna play, which is gonna be a problem with doors. Oh, unless they open them for me. Thanks, guys. Except for the fact that I can't stop running backwards, I'm actually kind of in control here. This port runs like such hot trash, but your movement is actually really fast. It feels so weird. On top of, you know, playing with a train controller. But it's nothing that with a little practice I can't manage. Or maybe not. I lose my cool in the toxic floor room and die just before the exit. Attempt number two, I'm looking better in the first room, but the poison and the amp are just too much for me. Again, despite getting a few hits in and nearly setting off the barrel, I am down in front of the exit again. I just want to beat one level with this thing. That's one level. Take three, let's go. The imp above in the toxic floor room helps me out. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Now if this stupid imp would just go down. Yes, uh, home free. Just gotta maneuver inside the room. Yes, I just beat the first level of Doom on a train controller. 83% kills to unhurt me plenty. Get on my level. 
Now, unfortunately, I don't have the N64 Densha controller, so I can't test Doom 64, and it's too bad there wasn't a Densha controller for the Xbox, because we'd have access to more Doom and even classic Wolfenstein, which is a bonus on this port. So that's pretty much all the Doom Week in Densha, but Saturn, PS2, and Dreamcast each had a Quake game. Let's test the entire Quake trilogy. And though I tried to move on to Quake uh, on Saturn, my capture card corrupted the footage, and so I lost all the uh, video of that. But I have the audio. <laughs> the audio from the footage I captured, that survived. No. <laughs> Damn it. And actually, it's easy enough to recreate the footage that I lost because it went about the same as Doom. Actually, movement is even harder. <laughs> so much harder, I wasn't able to leave the intro room since this port moves the lava pits in front of the normal teleporter. And I kept just diving right in that lava every time. Oh no. Uh, so Dentia Quake 1 ain't happening. But while I got my Saturn hooked up, we might as well do the entire Lobotomy trilogy. So I'll play some Power Slave and some Duke Nukem 3D. Oh god, getting off the roof of this thing will be a genuine achievement. Oh, oh god, oh no. I pull the accelerator and I'm stuck looking up. <laughs> oh great. But then some combination of the two levers resets my look. What is going on? Okay, I'm gonna hit those explosive barrels. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Yes, okay. Uh, now to run forward. Oh my god, what is... Not... Oh! There's, there's kind of a forward movement with the brakes. The emergency brake section of the brake lever has so many different movements with just the tiniest little touches. But I've somehow got off the rooftop? Alright, well now we're in this. Let's go. And trying to get this guy over here, I just cannot find a sweet spot for consistent movement. I'm just, Duke's kind of going wherever the hell he wants. Wait, but I got him? Really? That is some generous auto aim. <laughs> Alright, so I maneuver back here to the back door, and I, I'm trying to get into the back door, and I, I just cannot get consistent movements. Where are you going, dude? Okay, I'll try the other lever. No, okay. Now I'm stuck looking up. Oh god, Duke, where are you going? Why'd you... I came here to drive trains and chew bubblegum, and I'm all out of trains. Oh my god, there's probably a better joke there. Is it even a joke? That's it for Duke 3D, let's check out Power Slave. And yeah, uh, about the same, but you know, shout out to Power Slave, this game rules, uh, aka Exhumed. But also shout out to Lobotomy Software, here's the trilogy, they made some bangers on the Saturn, underrated work, always take a moment to shout them out if I can. Okay, but moving on. After this, the USB connection on my capture card would do me a favor, and just die all together. But then a friendly demon fixed it for me. I got a little boopity boop. How's about them apples, you f***ers? We are resume testing Quake with Train. Up next, Quake 2 for the PlayStation 1. For Quake 2, the look is all over the place. Until I find a sweet spot for the brake lever and I can mostly control with the accelerator. I cannot stop moving, but hey, at least I can move forward and almost reliably turn left and right. All right, can I get one guy? Can I get one guy? Hell yeah. Can I get two guys? Can I get two guys? No, okay. <laughs> let's move on to Quake 3. And this is great because I actually have two ports that I can test. Quake 3 Revolution on PS2 and Quake 3 Arena on Dreamcast. And Quake 3 Revolution requires a DualShock 2. And this thing ain't no DualShock 2, so that is a, that's a bust right away. Quake 3 Arena on the Dreamcast, on the other hand. Oh my god. What is happening? Oh, how was it even moving this fast? Okay, nothing I do seems to get it to stop moving inhumanly fast, so I just try to mash my way to the single player mode. And I somehow back out all the way to the title screen. Okay, in situations like this, you gotta swap for a regular controller, navigate the menu, and then when it's loading, swap back. Okay, and here we go. What have you got for me, Dench Controller? Welcome to Quake 3 Arena. Can, can cannot stop spinning. So damn, the Quake trilogy, uh, mostly a bust. Ah. All right, but then how about Unreal Tournament? That also got ports to both PS2 and Dreamcast. PS2 Unreal Tournament, total bust, unsupported controller, so all right, fine. Dreamcast port of Unreal Tournament. Absolute madness, look at this. So I don't know exactly what the hell it's doing, but it is not humanly possible to hit this many buttons on a Dreamcast controller. It's like playing with a task bot that's been drinking. 
This is the absolute madness I wanted. Oh my god. Like, I have a little bit of control, but also, like, no control at all. I definitely can't stop doing this. Or maybe I can, because it just suddenly... It just suddenly stopped. I guess I didn't shit too close to the sun. Uh, this is a chance to actually unplug it and show you how this game runs on a normal controller. Look how slow I'm moving and how how normal I move. I killed Jared. Now back to Densha. <laughs> what is happening? Oh my god, this is amazing. So much is just constantly happening. I can't tell if this is just if, I, if I'm doing something or this is just what the controller is doing or it's oh it's madness. I love it. And for the record, this is default everything. I have not adjusted the controls or the sensitivity or anything. And of course, the one time I get a rocket launcher, I cannot get the damn thing to shoot. Yeah. Can I get one kill? Can I get one kill? A single kill. All right, the brake lever does so many different simultaneous things, but not enough to impact hammer one guy. And then it just stopped working, but it's actually made me a tougher enemy to kill. Come on, dude. Come on, man. All right, well, anyway, but this guy tries to kill me. We started with Doom kind of as a formality, but then we transitioned into FPSs, which was never going to be a good fit for Densha. So, hey, enough spinning around really quickly. How about some other Taito games? Puzzle Bobble 4. I mean, with the almost 180 degree swing of the brake lever, like, this could be perfect. Man, I was not ready for this. Let's go. Wait, what? Yeah, it kicked me to the system menu? Let's try that again. What is going on? Let's try a regular controller and then switching over when I'm in the game. Okay, the words controller disconnected went away. So I know the Dreamcast is sensing that the Densha controller is plugged in, but not a single button works except for A, which kicks me back to the title screen. Now try everything, no buttons work except for A, which kicks me back to the system menu. Taito programmed this game specifically not to work with the Densha controller. Why would they do that? This blew my mind, because the Densha controller is like practically made for Puzzle Bobble, right? I mean, a few years later, they'd make a paddle add-on for the DS that worked with Space Puzzle Bobble, and it's amazing. But you can't take Uncle Derek down that easy, because guess what, Taito? I have a PS1, and I have Bust & Move 4, AKA the exact same game. Let's see if Taito is gonna train block me again here. All right, all right. Oh, this game's real cute. It's real fun, it's real cute, it's a good game. Let's try it. Yes! Uncle Derek wins again! It doesn't work like I'd hoped, the brake doesn't do a damn thing, but it does function, it does work! You cannot stop me, Taito! I have the face buttons for shoot, the accelerator up and down was able to move my thing back and forth. Wasn't easy, but I was able to beat an entire world of Puzzle Bobble 4, because I'm the best, and I will not be stopped, no matter how hard Taito tries to stop me. In fact, this got me curious about other Taito games I own. I had to know if they blocked the Densha controller on another game. Alright, Taito Arcade Legends 2. There's a bust and move again. Let's see what happens. Alright, controls the exact same way as bust and move 4. Does not block the controller. God, I'm playing a lot of bust and move for this video. Might be my favorite puzzle game that isn't Tetris. Oh, here's a quick addendum. This video is taking freaking long enough to make. I went to a convention uh, while making this, and I bought some more bust and move games. And I tried the Densha controller with these, and none of these blocked the Densha controller, nor did they work how I'd hoped. I have a, uh, what other title games do I got? G Darius for the PS1. Nope, can't move, doesn't really work. Ray Crisis? Nope, again, I can shoot, but I can't move at all, so not really, not gonna work. Kicks Neo. Nah, no. Again, movement is a huge issue here, and there's no movement with the Densha controller. But none of these straight up blocked my Densha controller. So Puzzle Bubble 4 for the Dreamcast is a weird anomaly. And you know what? Let's try another puzzle game while I'm thinking about it. Ballistic. This is basically Zuma's Revenge, and unfortunately, no control with the brake lever. God, I just want one game where I can rotate with the brake lever. Oh well, but you get enough movement with the accelerator, so it, hey, it's doable. And this is a great game. But anyway, this is what's so much fun about weird controllers is suddenly your entire collection is new again. Every old game is perhaps a new experience, a new discovery. And speaking of which, now that we got the official games out of the way and Doom out of the way, let's move on to the thing I actually bought this for, fighting games. I have so many fighting game series spread across these three consoles. We can have so much fun. Uh, let's start with Street Fighter. Okay, Street Fighter Collection for Saturn. 
uh, specifically Super Street Fighter 2 non-turbo edition. I'm playing on a train controller. I'm gonna need things slow. So let's figure out what we got. My face buttons have my light, medium, heavy kicks. Uh, accelerator has my punches. Break, I have ducking and walking to the left. And with some combination of the levers, I can do a dragon punch and a fireball. But I'm playing on slot two. If I switch to slot one, actually, I will have a block. All right, so I won't be able to walk forward or do a forward quarter circle for fireballs and such. But having the ability to block and all of Ryu's kicks, that should be enough to win a single round of Street Fighter 2. Okay, that's what I want to win one round of Street Fighter 2. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Well, this round's already over. Or is it? Successful blocks. Here we go. Oh, God, maybe I can get out of this corner. Ow. Oh! Magic Pixel! It ain't over! Let's go! Oh my god, I was holding my breath. Well, now I gotta take the match. Now I gotta win this. Job's not finished. I got Ken in the corner, but he pushes me back with fireballs. I have no way of moving to the right, so I gotta let him out. I gotta counter that dragon punch. I got him on the ropes. Oh, damn, I wanted to do a standing fierce kick. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Round three. I'm about to drop a train on this Ken. Let's go. You know what? I'm gonna let the final seconds of this match just play out. And put that on the board, man. I want a whole batch of Street Fighter 2 with a denture controller. And what did you do today, huh? All right, probably something more meaningful, fair enough, but I don't care. Let's move on to the PlayStation version. I'm gonna be playing the uh, version that's on Capcom Classics Collection Volume 2 for PS2. And you know what? I'm gonna cut to the chase here. This right here is the closest I got to taking a single round. Now, what is interesting is I have a little more control on the PlayStation version. I can block and I can walk forward, but have mercy! Ken is so brutal in this version. He never got a perfect on me. Oh my god. But he was not playing for the funny pages. Me and my wacky controller. Oh my god, it was not quite the same. But still, classic Street Fighter seems like shockingly playable on a denture controller. Let's get two of these at Evo and let's see what the hell happens. All right, well, let's, let's really get dumb. If anyone has ever done this in a YouTube video before, I'd like to see it because I'm breaking new ground. I'm going to play Mario vs. Capcom 2 on both Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 with denture controllers because nobody was dumb enough. And let's start with the PS2 port. And okay, it's probably sacrilege, but I'm just choosing the default three characters for both games just to speed things up a little bit. This video is getting long enough as it is. So I'm player one, but right now I'm the pirate lady on the right. And it turns out that in certain positions on the break, your face buttons just don't work at all, which becomes an issue. I'm just trying to get my bearings when I move the brake lever, and then I super? Cool. Okay, but now I can't stop doing supers, but hey, I got my first KO. Feeling good about that. I am not quite sure how to switch characters or call them for support. But you know what? If all else fails, you just get in close and start mashing buttons. Oh, I switched characters somehow. Great. And this might give me the life lead, which is important because that clock is running down. They start spamming specials. I somehow managed to block, but then I return back with my own special. How do you like that? I am mashing buttons, I am cranking the accelerator, and somehow I am keeping him back. Saved by the bell. That is another Dentia W. I don't care. I'm taking it. That's a W. That is mine. But then we switch up to the Dreamcast version, and now I have the problem of moving way too much in this port. But I guess pro tip, if you want to psych out the computer on stage one, just jump a lot. They don't know what to do. I wasn't able to figure out how to do specials or reliably uh, do combos, but I got a W again with the clock. Didn't quite feel as earned here, though. I gotta say, I had more fun playing the PS2, but I was able to get wins on both systems, so I'm just thankful that the computer isn't so ruthless here. Oh, fighting games with these denture controllers is way more fun than I anticipated. So let's keep it going. How about Power Stone? One of the greats, one of my favorites. I played a pair of matches, but I just want to show one quick thing and make sure that one thing is documented. Yeah, that is a perfect. That's a perfect with a Dentia controller because Power Stone's the best. And then I was thoroughly stomped on every other match. But still, with a pair of these things on equal footing, two people on Dentia controllers playing Power Stone, it could get interesting. Or maybe just Jack is the best. Power Stone's the best. Oh my god, we need another one of these. 
Stop remaking Resident Evil games and start remaking Power Stone. Capcom, damn it. Go to your room and make Power Stone. Don't come out till we make Power Stone. So at this point, I thought, hey, let's keep going with some more 3D fighters. I try some Dead or Alive 2 on Dreamcast and Dead or Alive 1 on PlayStation. And neither of them really worked. Same for Virtual Fighter 3 on Dreamcast and Virtual Fighter 4 Evolution on PS2. Though I was getting a little bit more on VF4 Evolution, but nothing that really satisfied me. I've seen what this controller can do. I needed more. And I thought, you know, there's a couple of fighting game series that you could do an entire Dencha run on. You know, we got the PS1, Saturn, and Dreamcast. I could do a run on Tekken. I could do a run on Virtual Fighter. I don't get to talk about fighting games much on this channel, but you know what? I want to talk about my favorite one, Soul Calibur. Namco may have forgotten about this series, but Uncle Derek hasn't. Soul Edge on PS1, Soul Calibur on Dreamcast, Soul Calibur 2, I only have the demo disc because I went all in on the GameCube version, and Soul Calibur 3, a complete run of the early years of this series on train controllers, and here's what I discovered. Uh, well, the first thing I discovered is that it's been so long that I forgot that the PS1 game is called Soul Blade, not Soul Edge, uh, like I just said a second ago. And hang on, uh, pause. Normally, I would re-record that mistake that I just said it's my favorite series, and then immediately got a name wrong, I, <laughs> I had to own that one. I had to leave it in. Anyway, let's get back to it. More importantly, what I discovered is that nine straight wins on a train controller. Once I found a sweet spot to set the brake lever, moving the accelerator performed moves on its own and changed the function of the face buttons. I found a position with the levers that put me in a constant ducking block, which allowed me to have some semblance of defense uh, without really having any movement. And then I did this combo somehow. But yeah, nine straight wins, no continues. I probably could have beaten the game, but I felt really good there. Hey, great first showing for this series in the Dencha controller. Let's keep it going. Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast. This was not as successful. Break was given lots of weird movements, and then I could not stop doing the charge move, and then I could not stop walking and jumping backwards. Big issues with jumping off the ring, which was breaking my heart because I love this game so much. But then things started to kind of click. I mean, all right, I was just basically spamming this one kick move with Sofatia, but it was enough for not one, but two perfects, and a perfect against Ivy. Before I know it, man, I cheesed my way all the way to the last stage, only three continues on Inferno, and I roll credits. Hell yeah, I will take it. Now all we need is the Dencha controller versus the fishing rod to determine who is the true champion of dumb Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur 2 demo on PS2 is next, and as luck would have it, one of the two playable characters on this demo is Cassandra, so we can compare with the last game, and also, yeah, I guess uh, she's my main. Oh, and by the way, I really like these games, but I wouldn't say I'm, like, good at them. I just want to make sure that that is very clear. The brake lever is doing all kinds of ridiculous sh And I got my kick moves that I can spam again, and I also got vertical slashes with the accelerator. Okay, I, I got more that I can work with here. And then I managed to throw, and... Yeah, I think things are starting to click here. Wait, I mean, okay. Can you, like, charge cancel into a throw like that? Is this unlocking some crazy tech by hitting so many inputs so fast? This is definitely out of my depth here, but it's looking like I'm doing some really crazy stuff with this thing. I mean, hey, I can mash buttons with the best of them, but I was never mashing quite like this. Or maybe it's just the demo. I don't know. After this video, I definitely got to get the full version of this game. It's time. I really should... This game is not expensive, I should really have the full version on Xbox and PS2, why not? And speaking of the full version on PS2, Soul Calibur 3 exclusive to PS2. This is almost exactly the same as Soul Calibur 2, except now I'm randomly taunting, and then I'm just unable to stop doing charge attacks. Even though part 3 here was bordering on functional, I am still ready to conclude that the Soul Calibur series is pretty ridiculously fun with the Dencha controller, and I would love to have an expert mess with this thing and properly evaluate it, especially with Soul Calibur 2. And okay, I did have to give Tekken some love too. I mean, I might as well, as it's the fighting game that Namco actually cares about, what with it, like, being actually successful and financially successful, unlike Soul Calibur. Okay, fine. And actually, I had a fun experiment here. So, I tried Tekken 2 on PS1, and then, Tekken 2 on PS2 as part of Tekken 5. Same game, same controller, different versions. And shockingly, the version on Tekken 5 is way more responsive. The PS1 original? 
barely functional. And why? Hell if I know. That is, that is just how crazy this controller is. I love this thing. In fact, Tekken 5 worked pretty well on this thing too. And Tekken 5 is really good. Okay, fine. Tekken is really good. Tekken's great. Tekken kicks ass. I just wish there was Soul Calibur 2. Or at the very least, the old HD re-releases were available still. At least just bring those back, Namco. What is what is the problem? Alright, sorry. This concludes the Soul Calibur gushing segment of the video. This video, you know what? It is getting a bit long. I got carried away, you could argue. I captured around 12 hours worth of gameplay footage for this video. I was just a madman for weeks with this thing, and then I had to somehow make a coherent and entertaining video with all of that footage. And the worst thing is, I couldn't even plagiarize anyone else. Like, I had to do it myself. But in the interest of finally wrapping this video up, I'm just gonna barrel through a bunch of weird stuff that I found. Here we go. Tony Hawk with Pro Skaters 1 and 2 on both PS1 and Dreamcast. I played all four to see how they compare, and actually, all four was, they were basically a bust. Just getting Tony to move was always a struggle. Weirdly enough though, the Matt Hoffman BMX demo worked best. Which is weird because a skateboard is more like a train than a bike. Mr. Driller had to do Mr. Driller, the Dreamcast game you can play with a keyboard, a fishing rod, the light gun, the damn microphone. Dig. Dig. Does not work with the Densha controller. Couldn't believe it. I played a ton of Resident Evil 1, I even tested Biohazard, and tank controls and trains just don't mix. But then I put in Resident Evil 2, and suddenly Leon is doing half an R1 press? How am I stuck in the middle of raising my firearm? How is this interrupting the animation? It is so weird! Same with the Dreamcast port too, I can interrupt Leon's animation? I can also kinda shoot and run in this version? Got way further than I ever thought that I would with this thing. Had to sample some mascots, knights on Saturn, completely unplayable, but it does function. Crash Bandicoot, you cannot stop running or turn around, but it was enough for me to finish a whole level. I'll take it. Spyro the Dragon, yes, you can drive a dragon with the Densha. Klonoa, I wasn't able to push up, so I couldn't exit the level, but I did get the whole way through. And since this is a train controller, how about we drive other vehicles? Daytona! Let's go away, let's go away on the Saturn. You'd think just turning left wouldn't be a problem? Well, you'd be wrong. The Dreamcast port, though, would not even let me try. Same with Sega Rally 2 on Dreamcast. No matter how hard this guy wanted me to go, it was not happening. But I just gotta appreciate this guy's dedication. Look, even as the timer has run out and the race is over, he is still trying to get me to go. I mean, it's over, but he's like, you can do it, man. You got this. You really need people like that in your life. You need it. Other vehicles, no crazy taxi, uh, no power shovel. But then again, it came with its own special controller. Yes, another crazy title controller. It, it never ends. Can a Dencha controller drive a Panzer Dragoon? No. Can it drive a Hedgehog? A six minute, 10 second lap. Count it. Can it drive a futuristic hover car? <laughs> kinda. How about a cyber sled? Uh, yeah, kinda. Can it drive a clockwork knight? No. Can it drive a broomstick? No. Space Channel 5? Worked better than you think, actually. And finally, can I kill a slime in virtual hide light? Well, it took me almost two minutes but yes. Oh, what's that? You got the Platinum on Spider-Man 2. Oh, we got New Game Plus 15 on Elden Ring. Find all the Korok seeds. I killed a slime with train controller on Virtual Highlight. So, don't even act like you on my level of dumb. And this video also brought to you in part by our Patreon supporters. Check it out on the screen somewhere. It's probably all the people that helped fund this video. Uh, thank you so much. You can join their ranks just two bucks. Also get exclusive content and get on the Discord and all that stuff. So if you really want to support the channel, go ahead and get us on uh, Stop Skeletons and Fighting on Patreon. But man, it was a journey to make this video in particular. In the time it took me to make this video, I caught a cold that turned into a sinus infection. Grace got pneumonia. Uh, I turned 40 um, and my Dreamcast and capture card both broke. Shout out to Kelsey Lewin for lending me her Japanese uh, Dreamcast and also the 
uh, two Denji Dego games for the Wonder Swan. Shout out to Metal Jesus Rocks for lending me his uh, NTSC Dreamcast. And also shout out to Zari, who are fixing my capture card, which now has USB-C, so that hopefully won't break anytime soon. And also Brian from Dreamcast, Junkyard, Saturn Junkyard. Um, yo, he lent me his, you know, Denji Dego box uh, for the Saturn. I had to give it back to him, uh, you know, before I shot all this stuff, because he moved. So, you know, hey, thanks, thanks, man. Huge shout out to the Sober Dwarf. They edited what I thought was only going to be the first third of the video, but they edited, I guess, the first fifth of the video. But the Denji Dego review section, that was uh, edited by uh, the Sober Dwarf. And man, it was nice to have uh, someone else handle a chunk of the video. Um, still took a long time to get the damn thing out, but I'd, be, I'd still be working on it now if not for her. Oh, and Kadikarus wants to give me um, the Jet Dego controller, and I'm going to let him because I have no willpower. Also, check out the Doom Shelf. Um, I think since last time I traded up my Super Nintendo cartridge of Doom for a boxed copy. That was a expensive little treat that I got myself. What was not an expensive little treat was a copy of the Ultimate Doom there. I got that for a dollar. I didn't actually have a copy of this, so a dollar? Hell yeah. Rest in peace to Akira Toriyama. Uh, I mean, the word legend doesn't even begin to, to, to start. Uh, so to, to pay tribute to him, here's all my Chrono Trigger. And my Dragon Warrior, my Dragon Quest, some Tollball number one, Tollball number two. Uh, I have Fortune Street uh, <laughs> down here. I realized though, for some strange reason, this is the only Dragon Ball game I own. It's a really interesting, cool fighting game, but I don't know why that's the only one <laughs> that I have. And also, hey, you know what? Like I grew up on the NES and I don't really talk about this era of gaming that much, but like, yo, here is the Atari 2600 that belonged to uh, producer Grace's grandfather. Got a small stack of games here, I have more. I got, I got more games here, but in this stack of games, though, I have Pac-Man and I have Space Invaders. I did not realize that before Pac-Man on the 2600, Space Invaders was like the big hit of the 2600. In fact, it really put Atari on the map and put a, put the Atari 2600 ahead of the competition. And listen, also while I was shooting this video, I hopped on a plane and flew to Milwaukee um, to go to a game convention to film the last part of the uh, of a documentary I have been making since 2022. Uh, we debuted the 16-player Baseball 2000 for the Game Boy, and uh, me and some friends have been trying to like figure that mystery out and kind of see, find the truth behind that. The claim of the 16-player Baseball 2000 for the Game Boy, we did it. Uh, that's a, that. That is a video that I'm probably going to be working on next. I don't know when it's going to be done soon, but I'm not going to put a date on it. I want something much smaller in between then. I can't, I'm not going to promise anything, um, but I am working on stuff and I really, really appreciate you liking, commenting, subscribing, all that stuff. Hey, you could also check me out on Patreon for just two bucks. I've been cranking out the you Doug videos, the Uncle Derek underground videos for the Patreon. Just recently, I did uh, a history of the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle um, games. And then I guess actually after this, I got to do some more great Game Boy Advance punching way stuff was the, what we put voted on for this month. So if you want exclusive content on the Patreon, it's only two bucks to get in. Um, if not, hey, just keep watching. I just, I, I would not be doing this if nobody was watching. So, so, so long as y'all watching, I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, I just turned 40 and I spent my, most of my 20s and all of my 30s doing this. Can't stop now. Thank you so much for watching. Uncle Derek says stay powerful. Uh, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.